Hi guys. Welcome to today's post market analysis session. I got my stop losses triggered twice today. I wanted to show you, I wanted to discuss with you what my entries were today. So, we will be seeing all that in today's video. But the most important part I wanted to show you was how I get out of my trades the moment the spot triggers my SL. And a lot of you have always kept asking me how I keep stop losses, where I keep my stop loss. So, I'll show you in today's video how I prefer to keep my stop loss whether i enter into a trade without protecting my stop loss is my stop loss hanging or is it well protected i'll show you all that to you today and also show you how i take my stop loss even before it hits my stop loss so all that we will be discussing in today's video please ensure that you watch this video till the end because i took one trade in nifty and i took one trade in bank nifty and both hit my stop loss levels i'll show you the psychology behind those trades i'll ensure that i show you the exact reasons behind trading at both those locations and at both those instances so please definitely watch this video and also leave your comments in the comment section below if you like the video so let's jump onto the charts now okay so we are on the chart of nifty now and uh, i have hidden today's price action let's start replaying it you can see it's the 29th of march 2022 so uh, let's start replaying this day as the day opened okay here we can see that the very first candle showed us that it was taking support at this level that we had marked. Uh, we had marked this level at around 17.291 and 17.295. So that was the zone that we had marked. And the very first candle was taking support exactly at that zone. But the uh, candle was red in color. You can see that the candle was not particularly a very uh, strong bullish or a very strong bearish candle. It was a mildly doji kind of a candle yes it had a bottom wick but it was nonetheless red in color and it also showed that it had a wick on the top although a smaller wick than the uh, bottom wick okay so such candles they really don't suggest much so i was waiting for a decision candle here usually when there is a small gap up i am usually uh, a little bit excited there seeing that the candle has opened outside the previous day's range but it is showing that it is a red candle okay and you can see that here we have the cpr it's a wide cpr and so uh, that is the cpr you don't see it because i have turned the next day's indicator off right now but we will see how it goes i'll keep explaining to you as it as we go forward okay now here's the second candle let's go back to the second candle and study this psychology first let me just play it back and I'll yeah, show you the second candle. Okay, the second candle here shows you that there is a lot of bearish strength inside this particular candle. So what does this show? That after this particular uh, doji, the buyers have come in, uh, sorry, the sellers have come in strongly and now they are pushing the price lower. And anyway, this was the level that we had marked as a resistance and price was taking resistance exactly at the same level you can see these two candles a fight for the first five minutes and then the sellers overcome that resistance so it was a fairly good indication that the price will fall from there and usually when the price falls from falls from there it will go and meet at least the previous day high but usually it is seen that the selling has so much strength from there that it will go and meet the cpr so uh, usually that is what I reckon when the day opens with strong red candles or when the day opens with a doji and then a red candle to follow it up with. Okay, let's go ahead and see what happens next in the next candle. Okay, another candle happened which was a green candle but it had broken the low of this red candle right here. I wanted to short this second candle, the 9.20 am candle. This was the PDH. And I knew that the PDH was not a very strong uh, supply zone. Okay, so if it is not a very strong supply zone, then it's not a very strong support either. Uh, you could see that price had come here and then it had taken some resistance fallen, but then it had formed a base here and shot up again. Then it had fallen, but then these were higher highs. Okay, and you could see that there was not much resistance there. So I knew that the PDH would not be a very strong support today. So 
what I did was I shot it at the 9.26 a.m. and my shorting price was around 150 rupees that was my limit order and I got a sell price of 150.65 as you can see and you can see that I had placed my SL right away where, where was my SL? Where SL was right up here somewhere so we will just go ahead and see what happened later from there I'll take you to the 9.40 a.m. candle now okay you can see here that this was 9.35 and this was 9.40 a.m. See, I was telling you that, let me just zoom this in. Okay, I was telling you that my plan was to short this particular candle here. Okay, but uh, shorting here and keeping my SL somewhere here above the candle was not really good enough for me because my risk reward was not allowing me that. So what I wanted was I wanted the price to retrace back a little bit here up to this level. So then my SL was a little bit smaller here. Okay, and uh, that was my SL level here and uh, my profit booking would be at the uh, CPR as I had said and so what I did was I took the trade here around this area at around 926 and this was the candle in which I had traded but then the 940 AM candle which was let me just tell you which candle it was it was this red candle here it was this candle that took my SL. What was the psychology behind shorting that candle? That this was a very strong 9.20 AM red candle. And uh, I wanted a better price. So I waited for price to come to my level here. And then this was my SL. I covered my position at uh, 9.40 AM exactly. That was at around 171 rupees. You can see that that was my uh, trigger. That was my trigger price. So that was my stop loss price. So that was my first trade of the day and uh, uh, I did not really think much about it. Uh, I was pretty cool about it. So there is no point in really repenting. I knew that my trade was right and there is no point repenting about it that um, it took my stop loss. It is just your duty to take a stop loss and then get out of the trade once your stop loss is hit. Anyway, let's go ahead and see what price did later. So from here price started to come again into my direction but uh, looking at these candles uh, will I really sit there and think oh, oh my god now my SL is taken I should not have taken my SL here see I took my SL here exactly at 9.40 am and uh, th then this candle you know it, it took my SL and then it uh, price started to reverse from there was I sad that oh now I'm going to I missed my opportunity uh, okay now next trade I'm going to push my SL further so if price comes to my direction here I'm not going to take my SL today I should have shifted my SL I will shift it tomorrow am I saying that no not at all that is the worst thing you can do that is absolute suicide I am not going to shift my SL in my next trade I am going to keep my SL in a safe place and I knew my SL was in a safe place why because it was above this week here here and I also knew that it was above the resistance here so I knew that my SL was placed in a very good place and I am not repenting about losing my SL. Anyway, so now let's see what happened here going forward. Okay, price kept consolidating for a while here. Right, now price started dropping and here it kind of came close to the PDH, the previous day high. You can see the previous day high was around this place but it wasn't really breaking it and at the previous day high it uh, made this bullish pin bar so anyway out of i was out of the trade so it did not matter to me but uh, i'm just explaining you the price action so let's see what happened after that now price is again taking resistance at the same level that we had marked see how much time price spends around that same area can you see this see the amount of volume in that area it's huge isn't it that is the reason why I keep saying that support resistance are the golden rule of the market and you should always trade based on support resistance. Okay, now this was past 11.30 am. Let's see what price was doing after that. Starts dropping. It starts to come to the PDH now. And I can see that it was challenging there, the PDH level. That was the support. And uh, that is why the price was making such a consolidation here. It was completely into a sideways kind of a trend here. Uh, it is usually a makeup for breaking the a strong support somewhere. 
so then price again bounced from that place it was going all over the place at that point and then a big candle comes and hits the pdh but it again takes support at the pdh as well as the days low here you can see that support here okay let's go ahead but there is not much strength there you, you see that there is not much buying strength there yes some big uh, green candles there then price again starts taking resistance around the same area and that was where the price action ended okay so uh, this is what i wanted to show you see my uh, expectation was that price would at least have hit the pdh isn't it that's what i said so here it did achieve uh, the pdh it did hit the pdh and uh, here you can see that my entry was somewhere here and my sl was somewhere here okay so even taking my profit back at the pdh would have been a good risk reward you can see the risk reward here so this was clearly a one is to two kind of a trade in nifty but it did not happen and nifty traded for a long time within this particular zone here and after it hit the pdh it took some buying from there you can see this one is a strong candle then this one was a strong candle and then this was a candle that broke out of that zone there and then this was one strong candle but then the day ended so then here you can see that now price action here has taken given us a resistance line here see this was the resistance here the days high that was the first one hour high and low and then you can see that it was the 305 pm candle which broke out of that zone and usually when that happens uh, you know that the price has broken out of a long term term resistance here because uh, this resistance was formed at what 9:40 am right and from 9:40 am it was at 305 pm that price broke out of that resistance but it was very late to take that breakout trade so there was no trade there anyway and uh, of course price did not come back down from there it kept going up but the buying came from the pdh here while at the same time bank nifty had reached the cpr and uh, you can see that that is how my psychology was while taking that trade there and that is how you should also be looking at uh, not jumping into trades unnecessarily but you should reason out with yourself as to why the trade is important and why if it doesn't work out you should book your profit or uh, your loss and you should get out of the trade so probably uh, seeing the price action and seeing the fact that i would have already done one is to two i would have taken my profit at the pdh itself so uh, my entry here and then the price action shows me that a very small wick comes and takes my sl and then after that the price never really came to that level again see here it never really came to that level isn't it so what was it that took my sl today it was this particular small candle 940 am candle that hit my sl and i was out of the trade and eventually it went and hit my target so do i feel sad about it no i don't feel sad about it that is the way the market goes then uh, if you want to be a good trader you should be able to take uh, the good out of it and learn the lesson that uh, yes you should you must take your sl whenever your sl is gone at that particular level and not keep crying over it all right uh, now let's uh, see what important levels we find here and uh, one important level as i just said was this level here so what we will do is we'll just mark this level here uh, the level being around 17321.50 so we'll just keep that level ready and uh, what we will do is we'll mark a zone there why is that level ready because it took a long time for price to break that level and uh, finally it broke it but after that the market just uh, did not have the time to show us what it was going to do next so that level will act as a support tomorrow uh, because it has acted as a strong resistance today here price could not break that level initially later it broke but then it acted as support so if price opens tomorrow in any of uh, this area we will see how price reacts to that level tomorrow and we already have these areas marked you can see here 
price has uh, reacted exactly to the levels that we previously had marked here before today's session so we will keep that uh, zone we'll carry that zone forward and an important area that we need to mark for tomorrow's trading session is the virgin cpr coming from today so we will keep that area ready also we have the virgin cpr coming from the 17th of march 2022 yeah and uh, there is no gap between uh, yesterday's and today's session so we'll not mark any gap there but uh, i think this should be the important levels as far as tomorrow's trading is concerned okay and uh, now let's go to see what bank nifty did okay now this is bank nifty see again here you could see i will not play back this day for you but i'll just explain it to you uh, on the chart see here this was a strong no neither a bearish nor a bullish candle but it was nonetheless a strong candle which was what was it telling us it was telling us that the market had opened positively but it uh, was undecided which way to go so whenever the market opens outside the previous day's range and you see that there is a strong cpr um, that is a wide cpr you know that the price is going to be attracted towards the cpr sooner or later okay so whenever the day opens and then you see that at the r1 pivot itself this is the r1 pivot the r1 pivot here is providing support to price and it forms a long tail uh, doji there it's an absolute doji it's a better doji than what it was in nifty you see that uh, here the price is going to find it difficult to cross the r1 level this is what you should infer from such kind of price action and then what happened was here uh, the follow-up candle exactly like in nifty was a strong red candle so uh, here again as i said uh, i traded in nifty i just showed you uh, bank nifty was also showing me the similar kind of price action there so that is why uh, i had taken the trade in nifty but then as price action progressed i could see that bank nifty was showing weakness which nifty was not you know nifty was showing positivity right since the morning um, after that is was after my trade was closed so i had taken the trade very early obviously uh, the market is undecided at that time so it's really un, uh, not possible for any trader a price action trader especially to know the direction of the market at that time that early in the day but now you could see that bank nifty here was kind of showing um, the a, a negative sentiment here you know uh, it was always showing a tendency to go and reach the cpr and uh, see this candle here which was that candle that was the 955 am candle and you always know that the 955 am candle is a very important candle from uh, my perspective because that time the market is closing on to the 45 minute mark so for me this candle is very important and that was the exact candle that had closed below the pdh that it had broken into the previous day's range and it had also broken the uh, current day low that was the 9:25 uh, am candle low that had made so that was the low till then but then immediately the next candle here reversed and i was not really keen on taking a short here why because as i said by that time i had realized that nifty was showing some strength it wasn't showing much uh, bearishness particularly so i was not very keen on going short in bank nifty either but then following up to that i saw that bank nifty was not going anywhere it was just trading in this particular zone for such a long time so bank nifty broke into the previous day's range at 9 55 am and you could see that uh, till 11 30 am it wasn't really doing anything up to 11 35 am also and then it was the 11 35 am candle that closed below the pdh again somewhere in my head you know i had decided that i wanted to short at 390 rupees now i had seen the price at 390 rupees somewhere uh, roughly somewhere around this area okay and uh, i knew that i did not want to short anywhere less than 390 rupees and i thought that 390 rupees would be a good selling price for me so i kept waiting for how many one two three four uh, and five candles so i kind of spent around 25 minutes waiting for the candle to show me uh, or to give me the price that i wanted I'm very stubborn with the kind of price that I want so that is the exact price that I will sell at before that I will not sell and then you know what happened here was that uh, it was the 12.05 pm so as you can see from the order book here 
it was after the 12.05 p.m. candle actually started. So it was this candle, it was not the green candle, but it was this candle that gave me the price of 390 rupees. So it was that candle which on which I went short. Now, why did I go short? See again, I'll explain to you. This candle here was the candle that, 9.55 a.m. candle was the candle that actually closed into the previous day's range. And then none of these candles actually showed me any strength up till this particular candle here. That was the uh, 11.35 a.m. candle. But then at 11.35 a.m. candle, here I did not want to short uh, at this level because I wanted my uh, wanted to collect a good amount of premium and I wanted to ensure that I want I had my SL set above. Uh, so I wanted to give my SL some room. And then obviously my target was the top CPR. So as I said earlier, I always know that the CPR will act as a magnet. I've always said, uh, I have also made that strategy. You can go ahead and uh, watch the video of the strategy that whenever the price opens within the CPR and the R1 or the CPR and the support one, the chances of the price being attracted towards the CPR are very high. And that was the reason why I could see bearishness in Bank Nifty right since the day open, but I could not see that bearishness in Nifty. And uh, now uh, at 12.05 PM, I had shorted at 390 rupees. That was this candle and you can see here, I have actually set up that tool here as to how I set up the stop loss and the entry and the target price. So see, it was a 55 point SL on the on the chart, on the spot chart. And as you can see here, it was a two, one is to 2.44 kind of a reward ratio. This is the 2.44 is the risk to reward ratio. Okay. So if you're risking one rupee, then I am, re, my reward will be around two and a, uh, that is two rupees and 44 paisa. So that is what the number here shows you okay and uh, you this number shows you the stop loss level so what is my stop loss it is the 55 rupee it is a 55 rupee stop loss and this will be my target gain so this is one level where i really don't pay attention to i don't care how many points i get but this is what i'm concerned with this followed up by by where my sl is so what i will do is i will first ensure that my sl is placed properly and then after that i will take a short entry at a particular entry point and then I will ensure that at that point I have a good strong place to keep my SL and then this will be my target price. So I don't care where my target is, I just see what my uh, risk reward is and whether my SL is well protected. So that is how I had traded but unfortunately the it was you can see that I had taken a stop loss put a stop loss at around 418 rupees. Okay, but uh, the at a 1229 p.m. candle, which was, let me see. Yeah, it was this candle, okay, the green candle. Now I'll just delete this tool here so you can see it clearly. It was this candle here, the 1229, rather the 1225 p.m. candle. And at 1229, it had reached my stop loss. So it had actually gone ahead and reached my level here. See, you can see the level here that it had reached. And I'll just zoom this in a little bit. See that candle actually went ahead of my, above my, SL level here you can see here it went above my SL level uh, but you can see that uh, my stop loss was not triggered there you can see that the order is cancelled there so what happened there was at 12 29 p.m. Uh, 12 29 p.m. and 11 seconds you can see that uh, I had taken that 410 rupees stop loss now why did I take a manual stop loss there because the price had not hit 418 rupees at all. Uh, that was because it was an out the money option. You can see here that was 35,800. Now, when I had shorted here, I'll just show you the level that I had shorted. This was the level I had shorted and it was a 35,800 call option. So it was an out the money call option. It was here that the call option was there. Okay. And uh, you can see the price here. This was 35,800. So you can see here, it was this level that uh, that was the out the money call option that was the strike price that I had selected. So all through the point where uh, the, the trade was on right from here to here, you can see that uh, Theta helped me to take a smaller stop loss and that is exactly why I'm happy shorting options. And uh, so what I did was I closed my trade manually at uh, 410 rupees instead of taking a stop loss of 418 rupees. And that's why I said in the intro that uh, you will see that I booked my stop loss even before the price hit my stop loss level. 
So you can see the cancelled order there. That was the trigger price that I had set for my stop loss order. But instead of that, I actually saved 8 rupees out of my stop loss today. So that is how mechanical trading should be. That is how you should be trading emotionless. And guys, this is pure mathematics. This is pure number play. And there is no reason that mathematics should fail because mathematics is a certainty. It is not a probability. Okay. So always remember that mathematics is the only thing and risk reward is the only thing that can protect you, that can save you. So now let's go ahead and check the uh, important levels for tomorrow's trading session. Okay, most important level that I see here is the virgin CPR of today. Now you will ask me, uh, is this a virgin CPR because you see this wick here inside the virgin CPR? Yes, wicks inside the CPR do nominate the current day CPR as a virgin CPR for the oncoming days. Okay, so always ensure that you mark that zone. Now the PDL is going to be a strong demand zone, but we will mark the demand zone right here. Okay, so that is a, uh, an important level because price has bounced from there after hitting the CPR. So it was at 1.15 pm that it hit the CPR. We will have that as an important level. We will just add a level here, which is the PDH that is today's high and we'll mark a zone out of it. Otherwise, I think all other levels you've already marked. There's no other important level that needs to be marked. I wanted to explain to you how price action analysis is done in the live market and how in spite of both my trades hitting my targets and in spite of the fact that even in Bank Nifty after shorting this candle, you can see it hit my target right here. I'm not emotional about it. Tomorrow again, I will go ahead and trade with my own strategy. I will not go out hunting for other strategies just because wicks come and take my stop losses. No, that is the nature of the market. That is the way the markets will go. And you must accept that the markets will behave in that fashion. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you like this video. If you have, please hit the like button. Also subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so you're notified each time I post a new video. And also leave your comments in the comment section below if you've liked this video. Thank you for watching once again. I'll see you in the next one.